So coming to the embryology, during seventh gestational week, this is the ventral duct and this is the dorsal duct. So expansion of the duodenum causes uh, ventral pancreatic bud to rotate and pass from the right to left and fuse with the dorsal pancreatic duct. After rotation, it looks like this. So here is the ventral bud forms the pancreatic head and uncinate process. Dorsal bud forms the anterior head, body and tail. So this is the... Uh, main pancreatic duct now and this is the accessory pancreatic duct. Coming back to the anatomy, this is the pictorial depiction where you can see the main pancreatic duct, this is the accessory pancreatic duct and the main duct with the common bile duct forms the hepatopancreatic ampulla of water and the accessory pancreatic duct is called duct of Santorini, it opens into the minor papilla and main duct opens into the major papilla. This is the MRCP image. Key in MRCP in pancreatic anomalies uh, detection is getting the MRCP image uh, correct. So for that your protocol should be correct. Then the preparation of the patient. No, so normally when patient comes for MRCP always they are not uh, fasting. So if clinician is asking you for the pancreatic duct anomalies to see, please tell them to be uh, fasting for four hours at least. And then just do 3D and 2D MRCP. We at our institute do axial uh, 3D MRCP instead of coronal. That gives us better depiction of the pancreatic obiliary anatomy. And then our routine T2 axial and coronal T2 fat set duct anomalies or this ductal uh, variations to be seen. We give them uh, gadolinium around 1 ml in 100 ml of water that acts as a negative contrast or even the pineapple juice also acts because it has manganese and it suppresses the T2 signal. So the duodenum, the background things are suppressed on that. So that will give you the better picture. So coming to the variational anatomy, this is the sigmoid shape pancreatic duct. These are the loop shaped ducts. Then there is another uh, variety of meandering main pancreatic duct, MMPD, which has reverse Z type. It is like hairpin turn and then the loop type. So B1 and this is the A is normal duct. B1 and B2 are loop type and these C1, C2, C3 are this reverse Z type. These drain normally into the major papilla and even these are also associated with uh, idiopathic acute pancreatitis. So these are the Im MRCP image. As you see, this is the normal pancreatic duct. This is what I said, B1, B2, those types, loop types. And this is reverse Z type. Then anomalies of pancreatic duct categories are there where you get bifid configuration of dominant duct of Risberg. This is the main duct is dominant and the duct of Santorini is uh, non-dominant. Then same bifid configuration with dominant duct of Santorini. So here minor duct is dominant. Then rudimentary non-draining duct of Santorini and what we normally look for is the pancreatic divism and ansa pancreatica. So coming to the pancreatic divism, most common variant, it's actually literally divided pancreas, results from failure of fusion of dorsal and ventral pancreatic ducts. Dorsal pancreatic duct drains most of the pancreatic glandular parenchyma via minor papilla, generally asymptomatic, most of the time an incidental finding what we get while reporting and may be associated with acute and recurrent pancreatitis and can lead to Santoroni seal and it has around three types. So this is type 1 classic pancreatic divism total non-union of ventral duct and dorsal duct so this is the dog dorsal duct and this is the ventral duct no connection at all and occurs in majority of the cases around 70 percent so these are the examples where you can see this is the minor papilla 
and this is the duct of Santorini or a minor duct and this thin line what you are seeing is the major duct. So there is no communication as such. This is another example where you can see the same thing and these are the cross-sectional. Even on cross-section just look at the cross-sectional images when you are going to the pan through the pancreas and just see that whether it is draining into the minor papilla. Pancreatic division type 2, there is absent ventral duct, it is seen in 20 to 25 percent cases, minor papilla drains all of pancreas while major papilla drains bile duct. So this is the case where the minor papilla is draining whole pancreatic duct and there is no uh, ventral duct here. Pancreatic division type 3. It is a functional pancreatic divism, filamentous or inadequate connection between the dorsal and ventral. So this is that filamentous connection where you can see the communication between these two ducts. Then it's a complication Sant Santorini seal. It is dilatation at the uh, minor papilla. It is a complication of pancreatic divism. Just always look at the minor papilla that whether it is dilated. This is the example of bifid configuration with dominant duct of Risberg. So this is duct of Risberg which is dominant and you can see here a minor duct is draining into the minor papilla and this duct is dominant. So always do your uh, reconstruction by yourself on the monitor that will help you in just don't go by the images which are reconstructed images by others. Then ansa pancreatica, communication between the main pancreatic duct and the accessory duct. It is a predisposing factor in the patients with idiopathic acute pancreatitis, arises as a branch duct from main pancreatic duct, descend down initially and then ascend forward, upward forming a loop and finally terminating into the minor papilla. So this is the case where it is descending down and ascending up and <coughs> draining into the minor papilla. Annular pancreatic duct encircles and extends to the right side of the duodenum. Pancreatic duct without dilatation may be invisible on MRCP. So you have to look at the axial cross-sectional images also. The annular pancreatic duct usually communicates with main pancreatic duct but may drain into the intrapancreatic common duct, duct of Risberg or duct of Santorini. So here is the pictorial depiction. This is the main duct. This is the annular pancreatic duct coming. So on this, this pancreatic tissue you can see encircling the second part of the duodenum. These are few more variations where you will see the pancreatic duct duplication. So here the distal duplication is seen and here the proximal duplication, how we see fenestration in the angio MRI brain. So this is like that, that fenestration. Anomalous pancreaticobiliary junction. It is also called as pancreaticobiliary maljunction, abnormal junction of the pancreatic duct and CBD which is more than 13 to 15 millimeter and uh, occurs outside the duodenal wall to form long common channel. So this is a type A stenotic type where there is dilatation of common bile duct and upstream stenotic segment of distal common bile duct. So here is the stenotic type, there is narrowing here and this is the main pancreatic duct. This is type B non-stenotic. So here is the case where distal duct is smoothly joining the common channel and dilated channel type, narrow distal common bile duct joins the dilated common channel. So this channel is also dilated and this is a colloidal cyst above and this is the long common channel. And type D is complex. Uh, complex maljunctions, they are associated with pancreatic divism and other complicated duct systems. 
so choledocal cyst is also there this pancreatic division is also there and this is the complex mal junction complications of these ductal anomalies are mainly as we said pancreatitis acute and chronic then there can be gallstones then uh, cholangitis and biliary tract carcinomas so in conclusion radiologist should be aware of these anomalies and their variable imaging features to distinguish them from the pancreatic conditions mrcp is the imaging modality of choice 